Timing oh. in the yellow, and a big crash. It's Hinchcliffe, and it's J.R. Hildebrand. You okay, bud? It is Hildebrand. Hildebrand and Hinchcliffe into the wall hard. Yeah. We're in one of I'm fucked. Sorry, guys. Apologies after the major, major impact. Small fire there coming out of James Hinchcliffe's cars. Both of these cars really tore up on the right side or the left side of both cars. So looks like they probably made contact and did both a half spin. After four crashes, three of them big yesterday, well, we had avoided any massive contact today, but this is significant. Good to see JR climbing out. And they're working on James Hinchcliffe. It was like I said, with 80 to go now, these restarts are going to become absolutely frantic. Guys are going to want to make moves, and these cautions are going to breed more cautions. And good to see Hinchcliffe getting out under his own power as well. Nasty, nasty crash. Let's take a look at what happens here. Hinchcliffe on the inside, down low on Hildebrand. Kind of just a racy and deal. One guy was coming down, the other guy was coming up just a little bit. They barely touched, and yeah. both of them in the wall. Hinchcliffe square on the back attenuator. Hinchcliffe had a little bit of space to the yellow line, but probably didn't want to get too close to the apron. Meanwhile, Hildebrand doesn't really want to run too high because as we've seen already, if you get up in that gray, you won't finish the corner. So let's walk on watch on board with Hinch here. Oh, hard hit. That yeah, was just really one of those racing deals. It was a pretty late attempt by Hinchcliffe to kind of put it in there that late. He was only at his back wheel, and, you know. Yeah. Hildebrand was going for the line. You don't want to get too high and get in the gray, and Hinchcliffe was kind of just stuffing it in there really late. I agree with you, Paul. Plus, you know, Hinch is following some cars into the corner, and you really trust that the room is going to be there if you make a move that late, and with dirty air in front from the car ahead, you're going to have some understeer and undoubtedly slide up the track a bit. You could hear Hinchcliffe was out of the throttle trying to make the front end work, but. You know, that's one of the things that Pocono Raceway has done. They've made massive facility improvements in the last few years, and virtually the entire outside and most of the inside retaining walls are covered by safer barrier. Now, only Indianapolis and Daytona have more safer barrier than they have and here at Pocono. Kevin, so, th th here work. you can see it. I love the history of this. Look at this. This is the original barrier of Pocono Raceway. I think Paul's uh, boiler visited plate. that boilerplate boiler back plate. in the day. And then here's the concrete wall that uh, was the new development bef after the boilerplate. And then you see the safer barrier here with these foam inserts. That's the safer barrier. And back in the day when this was here, there was no chain link. If you went up in the air, you exited stage right and out of the stadium, as they say. So some have taken the chance to make a quick pit stop. And we've seen that and we heard that earlier that there was some concern about that rear wing pod and we saw it flapping around during the last stop so team Penske is going to take the opportunity on right here to change that yes because he got himself back on the lead lap this is not really a problem for track position so go ahead and take this opportunity because he's been complaining he needs more rear downforce so he has a new rear section stays on that same lap and so this could be exactly what Will Power needs now to try and take a charge from the back. We've seen it once by more than one driver. I like that strategy. Fix the car, take the fuel, and most importantly, I think, get a fresh set of tires. You're going to be four laps fresher than anybody else in the field. Hey, Townsend, I just noticed something. The reason that he had problem with the rear section here, he's been hit from behind. You can see the imprint of a front wing in that back clip. So we did hear, remember that time we saw him get super sideways? He was on the radio saying he got hit. Well, there's visual evidence he did get hit. Katie? Hit, Jan, actually came from Charlie Kimball who came in to change his front nose because when James Hinchliffe got sideways, he's the one that ran into the back of Will Power. Well, we have their teammates back here in 17th and 15th, New Garden and Power, so. So on the hook, James Hinchcliffe, J.R. Hildebrand, one more look, third caution here at Pocono, and a massive hit. Robin, go ahead. Hinch, 
you're all right. What happened? A racing accident or everybody ran out of room? Yeah, I, just, I think a racing deal. You know, um, a bunch of guys were kind of too wide there, and I was on the inside of JR, and, you know, I was talking to him in there. He said he got a little bit loose, and it didn't really matter. He kind of put a bunch of wheel. Sorry, he got, got a bunch of understeer, put a bunch of wheel into it, and it kind of pitched him sideways and moved him down into me. So uh, it's just just... You know, ultimately, it's it's my fault because we shouldn't have been back there. You know, I made that mistake on pit road, and uh, I'm so sorry for the boys. They had a killer first stop, got us in the top five. We ran away to the front. We were just kind of just cruising, man. We were having a really good race, and uh, I screwed up in the pits, put us back there. We started making some moves, and I had an unbelievable sideways moment coming oh, up. Oh, you had a sprint car moment, son. That was one of the – Townsend Bell says the save of the year. Well, I, yeah, we were uh, – I, I was at Grandview Speedway on Thursday. I was learning some tips from those guys, so thank God I did that. But – um, like I said, we shouldn't have been back there. I, uh, I feel bad for the boys. They, they deserved a solid probably podium finish today, and um, we're having fun running up there. And Yeah, we'll regroup and uh, move on to Gateway. Thanks, kid. JR, you're all right, brother. Uh, Hinch said you guys were talking. You got a little loose, maybe? Yeah, I just, you know, it, we were running down in there too wide, and uh, the cars in front of us spread out and went too wide. So as soon as that happened, I got a bunch of push right away. So I fed wheel in, and you know, Hinch was Hinch was down on the bottom, so it sort of hooked up, and um, you know, I just wasn't leaving enough room for all of that to be going on and and him to be down there. So um, you know, we were fighting the car a little bit all day, but the guy's been doing a good job. We've make, been making good fuel economy, so. Um, just frustrating to have it have it end that way, and, and a bummer to have taken out Hinch, um, you know, with that with that incident. It looked like your car came to life like midway through the first or second stint, and then it kind of fell back. Yeah, you know, we were we were good for for periods. We were really good through turn one. Um, just couldn't quite get it dialed in through through three. So we were losing a lot of time um, and a lot of speed, particularly off the corner in three. Um, and we were, you know, trying to kind of find it as we went along. We were tuning the car, you know, kind of in and out, but uh, it just wasn't quite there. Hopefully, it, it, you know, maybe it would have been towards the end. It felt, felt pretty good for the first couple laps on new tires. But, um, yeah, just a, a really unfortunate way to, to end what's been a tough weekend. But, you know, we've been able to get through these things so far this year. So I uh, feel bad for the Fuzzies Vodka boys. Thanks, kid. Kevin.